Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video today. A couple viewers have commented on my video on how I installed my FTM 400 in my truck, either the previous 4Runner or the current 4Runner, how I hooked it up to power, and what I did. So we're going to cover that right here, right now, on Ham Radio for non-techies. Welcome back to Hand Radio for Don Techies, guys. Like I said, we're going to jump into this real quick. Not be a long video because it's rather simple how I did this. But I want to show you a couple options of what I did, what options I had, and how I had previously set the FTM 400 up in my car. And this will work for any radio you're installing in your vehicle. Um, it's not a big deal, but it's worth uh, talking about. So let's jump into the car real quick, and we'll start from there and go back into the engine from there. Okay, so to start off here. I've got the radio, the head unit uh, separates from the main body and runs with cables down to my Lido mount down into the actual radio here. From here in the back, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, there's power cables there that I ran back behind the center console that go to the other side, the driver's side of the vehicle, that then run through the firewall into the uh, engine compartment. So what I did originally when i had it set up in my old forerunner i bought one of these little power auxiliary kits that i had screwed on to the driver's side of my old truck and the wires came into here and the wires from this went into the uh, engine compartment to hook up to the battery now i originally bought my 400 and had it my old forerunner i originally bought one of these this is just a simple comes right off it's a simple little fuse box where you put your power in from your battery and you hook up whatever you want into these things here based on the type of uh, amperage you want you can change out these fuses and you know mix and match whatever however you want I have this in my Amazon store if you're interested in buying one but honestly I don't really know if it's actually that uh, necessary because like I said your radios come with power cables that have inline fuses now, when I did this next setup, when I got the new vehicle, I did not use this, obviously, because it's in my hand. Uh, so I ran everything directly to the battery. But I want to show you another option that they came out with. And this is mainly for Toyotas. You can get them for almost any car. Uh, this one was specifically made for my Toyotas. We're going to pop into my engine compartment, and I'll show you what I did there. Okay, so looking down at my engine compartment, you can see I've got the original wiring for the radio hooked up directly to the battery going back through the firewall and back in to where the fuses are inside. And what I did is I had to cut the wires to feed them through the firewall, which came right down there somewhere. And then I re-soldered and crimped everything to get the wires connected again before I ran it back to the back to the radio. Now what I've since purchased, and this is an option you can do, I bought this uh, little power, auxiliary power kit. And it's got a, uh, got a big breaker on here, and it's a, this is made for hooking up electronics to your car. And with like with mine, for instance, I'm going to hook up a whole bunch of lights. i got roof lights, i got side lights, ditch lights, front LEDs, rear LEDs, all kinds of stuff. But you can actually customize what you hook up to this, and all your wiring goes up underneath here. connects those eight little, this place to hook up eight different uh, options, whatever you want, from five, there's two five amp, 210 amp, 220 amp, 230 amp fuses, and again, you can change those out. It's just a, it's just a, 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 a electronic brick to hook up wires to, uh, so you can mix and match however you want. And you have an 80 amp master breaker over here. Uh, so I bought this thing. I wired this thing up because I do on my truck. I've got these right now. I've got these little what they call Raptor lights, and I wanted to be able to have options to turn them on and off as I see fit. So this was a cool little addition to buy, and this also connects directly into the battery. And comes down here and uh, and and goes into the uh, or grounds on the side of the of the uh, chassis of the vehicle, but this runs back to a command center or a little command module that's inside the truck. So let's go take a look at that. Looking inside the vehicle, we have this button push button uh, option here, and you can program. There's all kinds of stickers you can put on these little buttons here to make it do whatever you want. So I've already got mine set up for my DRLs, which is the Raptor lights in the front. I've already got it preset for my light bars, my roof lights, my windshield lights, my rear lights. And I have three more spots up here. I can put anything I want. I can add in compressors or 
you know, whatever you want to do with it, you can do all kinds of stuff. So you can, there's, there's no limit to that. Uh, but as a separate option, if you wanted to, and I don't see a real need to do this, but you could use that power commander or that power auxiliary kit and plug your radio, instead of directly into the battery, plug it into that thing and then power your radio by pushing one of these buttons to activate your radio and turn it on. Uh, so that, that's another option you have if that's something you might be interested in. But as you can see, I didn't really want to deal with that. I'm happy with my 400 being just where it is. My mic's crooked here. Uh, but with my 400 like that, I just hit the power button. I'm, I'm ready to go. I mean, actually, it's hooked up to power now, so I can just turn it on now. And it should just pop right up. So I have it on constant power. Whereas if I had it hooked up to that little auxiliary power kit, it would only come on if the vehicle had power running to it. So it turns off when the power in the vehicle's off. So I wanted to make sure I had total control, which is probably another reason why I don't really want to have my radio hooked up to that. I'd rather have it be on its own separate thing. And it's already protected, like I said, by the fuses that come with your radio so that's it guys there's not a whole lot to it um, the wiring was relatively simple you have options when you're hooking your radio up to your vehicle oh and before we go this is gonna be an edit for the video here i know someone's gonna ask about this what if the wires i get with my radio aren't long enough to go from where i have it mounted in my car up to where the engine compartment is and the battery and or however you plan on hooking up your your uh, radio Honestly, just grab the wire, bring it up to Home Depot, or look on, actually look on the wire itself. It should tell you what the gauge is. If you can match up that gauge, go on Amazon, buy some of the same type of wire, maybe get something that's, you know, high temperature or a silicone wrapped wire, and solder and crimp everything and, you know, cut the length you need to for your installation and make sure it looks good. It's not a very difficult thing. If you bring it up, if you don't have that option, you don't have uh, the specs on the wire casing to tell you what, uh, what uh, gauge it is, bring it up to an electronics store, bring it up to Home Depot. Somebody will be able to identify and tell you what that wire gauge is and match you up with something that, something that will work for you. Anyway, guys, let's get back to the video. But just make sure you do it in a safe manner. Do I have my radio grounded? Nope, I do not. I have the, uh, the rear, if you saw the other video when we installed this thing, I've got that uh, diamond... Uh, lip mount for my antenna. I used the plates it came with to ground it to the, you know, act as a, as a type of a ground to the truck. But I see no reason to ground my radio in my car. I mean, I don't. I'm not. I'm not running any kind of special equipment. Nothing's going to cause a power surge. Nothing like that. And I've been running my radio like this for three years and never had a problem. Uh, this radio, this particular radio, survived the accident that I had last year where I flipped my truck over and hit another car. So, if it can survive all that, I'm pretty sure it can survive any, you know, static in the area, uh, which I don't really think is going to be an issue or a problem. So, anyway, guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps YouTube understand and know that you like these videos, you like the information I'm bringing to you. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscriptions are still free. Hit the subscribe button, click on the little bell, you'll be notified when I do new videos. And until then, guys, my name is Scott. This is my call sign is KI5NPL. I thank you for joining me today and watching. Have a great day in 73.